Are you income rich? How much money puts you in the elite category? Okay, so we're going to get straight into the video. In this topic, we're going to be talking about the top 1%, the top 5%, and the top 10% of income earnings. We're also going to be comparing the United Kingdom's versus the United States income. We're going to be comparing them side by side as we go through it. Okay, so starting off, let's start at the very top and work our way down to the bottom. So starting off at the top 1%. In the United Kingdom, you would have to be earning £180,972. That equates to £15,081 per month. That's an incredible amount of money. £15,000 per month, £180,000 per year. However, when we look at that compared to the United States, these figures are dramatically different. To be in the top 1% in the United States, you'd have to be earning £819,324. What's that a month? Well, that is £68,277 dollars per month. So there's a huge difference there between £15,000 and $68,000 per month. So you can see the fast discrepancy between the economy in the United Kingdom and the United States. Okay, so I think it's fair to say that most of us are not going to be in that top 1%. There may be one or two people watching this video who are in that category, but it's probably even unlikely at that. We're going to move down now to the next percent. Are you in the top 5%? Starting off in the United Kingdom, if you were to be in the top 5%, this is a lot more realistic at £87,000 and £12 per year. Per month, that equates to £7,251 per month. That's still an awful lot of money and I don't think many people will be in that category. There will be much more than the 1%. There's probably a lot more of you in that category watching this episode comparing it to the 1% but it's still astronomically high. When we compare that to the top 5% in the United States, again this figure is massively larger at £335,891 equating to an astronomical $27,990 $27,990 per month. So a big, big difference again, once again, showing the difference between the United Kingdom's economy and the United States. Moving on to a slightly more realistic percentage, the top 10%. There's going to be a lot more of you in this category, being that we are a finance channel. But still, again, this is definitely not an average. This is not common. This is still very high numbers. So if you are in the top 10%, you would have to be earning £66,669 per year in the United Kingdom. That would equate to £5,555 per month. It's still an awful lot of money, but we're getting into slightly more realistic figures now, I feel. However, when we go over to the top 10% in the United States, we're looking at a figure of £167,639, equating to $13,969 every single month. An astronomical amount of money, either way. You look at it. Now, Are you in these figures? Are you in the top 1%, 5%, top 10%? If you're willing to share that in the comments, let us know in the comment section below. I think some people would really appreciate to see where they stand and also hear where other people stand. Now, moving on, whatever these figures are, they're all different and they're all individual to that person. However, they recommend from expert data that the best amount to invest every single month is around 15% of your income. I mean, realistically, I think that's quite a high figure for the general population. There is a bit of an inflation crisis in the United Kingdom right now. It's probably also slightly in the United States, especially with the the elections and that sort of thing going on. So 15% is the recommended amount of your income that you should or could invest at a real sweet spot. But I don't think that's realistically possible for, for everyone because you know everyone's own circumstances are completely different and on that topic it's very important to not let these figures sort of get you down because comparison is the thief of joy you may not be in the top one percent you may not even be in the top ten percent but what's important is that you are happy and you are content 
with what you're earning. Comparison is the thief of joy when you see social media and you see everyone else showing that they've got these wonderful things or appearing to have these wonderful things, it can make you feel slightly negative. So on the topic of these figures, I wanna say comparison is the thief of joy. So try not to compare yourself with others, focus on your own journey, your own goals and your own plan. And I think that will help you along your journey. Now, despite that topic being comparison is the thief of joy, If you are a highly motivated person and you want to build your financial future like myself, there are things you can do to improve your financial circumstances. You can use the compound effect, implementing small changes on a regular basis, which have an absolutely dramatic effect over a long term plan. Lots of little implemented changes can make a big difference over a long period of time. And this is something you can do by spending a little bit less, saving a little bit more. Also, cash flow. The cash flow plan is something that I find very helpful to myself. I like to use the cash flow plan to monitor my liability versus my asset column. I look at my liabilities, what's taking money out of my pocket. It might be a car, it might be a direct debit subscription. And then I'll look at my asset column. What's generating me income? What's generating me semi-passive or even passive income? Then when you've got that list created, a physical form of paper or document online, you can actually look and visually see what is negative in your financial world and what is positive. And once you actually see these, it really allows you to work out those negative things and work in those positive things. So then on that topic, if you are trying to improve your circumstances, what should you invest in? Well, there's so many different investment vehicles out there that are very interesting, but also intimidating. For me, I have my golden three investments. Now, my golden three, what are they? Personally, this works for me very well. It may not work for you, but if it gives you an idea, then it may be beneficial. So the top three that I use on my long-term low-risk plan to build me pretty astronomical wealth are precious metals, index funds, and property. The reason I use precious metals is because it's the backbone of my investment portfolio. I use it as my safety net. If all else fails, I am most convinced that gold bullion is going to protect my wealth. If my other investment vehicles fail because of economic downturn or instability, I'm very, very self-reliant on the fact that I can trust gold bullion the most in terms of my investment vehicle. So number one, I invest in precious metals, silver and gold. Not only does it hedge against inflation, but it preserves my wealth. And as gold averagely goes up around 9% a year, it's also a little sweetener when your precious metal stack does increase in value. I also use index funds to build compound wealth over a long-term plan using the dollar cost averaging method. It's considered a very low risk, safe long-term plan to add incremental savings while accumulating lovely bits of interest which get reinvested building that savings pot nice and fast. And then thirdly, property. My goal is to generate several amounts of passive and semi-passive income, mostly through property using the buy-to-let strategy where I get rental income on a monthly basis to generate that income on a more consistent basis. Those three are going to lead me onto a much more likely successful financial future. Now, a big bonus to add would be if you can start a side hustle or a business, those are massive things to dramatically help improve your financial circumstances. But as I said at the beginning, these are my golden three. They won't necessarily be perfect for you. Now, moving on, don't let these figures deter you. Let them motivate you. It's better to have something rather than nothing. It's easy to compare yourself to the person next door or the people online. But if you focus solely on yourself, you can let the success do the talking for you. Now, in final conclusion, what have we got from these figures? Are you income rich? Does it put you in the elite category? Are you in the top 1%, the top 5%, or the top 10%. Well, we've seen that there's a big discrepancy between the United Kingdom's economy and the United States. That's clear to see, and I think that was gonna be pretty evident from the get-go. Also, this should be personal to you. Whether you're in any of those categories or you're not, 
Focus on your own investment journey and you'll get more successful as you move along. And let this serve as motivation. Don't let this make you feel negative because you may not be in that category. Let this inspire you and push you on that correct trajectory to serve a better financial future for yourself. I hope you've enjoyed watching this episode. This has been Are You Income Rich? How Much Puts You in the Elite? If you've enjoyed this video and you have watched all the way till the end, consider becoming a channel member. I have my own YouTube channel membership where you become a premium future investor. You get exclusive behind the scenes, early access content, all sorts of bonuses and extras. And on the 15th of every single month, I do giveaways to my channel members only in live giveaways. And yes, I post to anywhere in the world. Last month's winner was our newest member and they got very lucky. So it could be you. To become a channel member, just click the link in the description and join the channel membership. Thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you all in the very next episode.